Hello friends. Before moving on to our topic, let's look at this case scenario. A 67-year-old female, a diabetic patient, presented to the hospital ER, with the complaint of intermittent chest pain lasting for two days. The pain was located in the mid-thoracic region. ECG was normal. She was kept for serial ECG and she reported a reduction in pain. ECG taken during the painless period showed biphasic T waves in V2 to V4. Troponin I was found to be slightly elevated. Immediate angiography was done, and critical occlusion was observed at the left anterior descending artery. Balloon dilatation and stenting was done to the LAD, and the patient was discharged from the hospital without any complication. This case scenario is typical of Wellens syndrome. Wellens syndrome is a clinical syndrome, characterized by biphasic or deeply inverted T waves, in V2 and V3, plus there is a history of recent chest pain which has now resolved. These features are highly specific for critical stenosis of the left anterior descending artery. Identifying the syndrome carries significant diagnostic and prognostic value because, patients with Wellens syndrome generally have a high risk of developing an acute MI, in the following days to a week, and the risk of sudden cardiac arrest is also high. Secondly, due to critical LAD stenosis, these patients do poorly with medical management and require invasive therapy. And number three importance of this syndrome is that, these patients shall not be subjected to stress tests due to the risk of developing MI or cardiac arrest. Rather the investigation of choice is coronary angiography. Coming on to the diagnostic criteria of Wellens syndrome. These include Leads V2 and V3 showing negative and symmetrical deep T waves, or biphasic T waves. The changes may rarely extend from V1 to V6, depending on the proximity of the lesion in the associated artery. Other criteria in addition to the finding of biphasic or inverted T waves include, the observation of described ECG findings during the painless period, ST segment is isoelectric or is mildly elevated up to 1 mm, absence of precordial Q waves, a history of angina, and lastly, normal or mildly elevated cardiac enzymes. As obvious from the criteria, Wellens syndrome has two different types of T-wave morphologies, seen during the painless period. Based on these different patterns, Wellens syndrome is divided into type A and type B. Type A is found in 25% of cases while type B is in 75%. In type A, there are biphasic T waves typically observed in V2 and V3, as was the case presented in the beginning. While in type B, there are deep negative T waves in leads V2 and V3. An interesting point to note is that, in patients having Wellens syndrome, upright T waves are expected during pain. This is called the pseudonormalization of T waves. And the character of the chest pain might be in the form of typical or atypical angina. What is the management of this syndrome? As has already been discussed, these patients need urgent coronary intervention due to the risks of extensive MI and sudden death. And this is it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. Also, give us feedback about was this video helpful. See you in our other videos.